round four of the Fort Ledger series. We're here at round four, Fort Ledger, New Jersey. It has a real high banking, so when you just chuck it in there, you can feel you just get squatted down the seat and you're just full throttle all the way through there. I love it because it's so long and it gives you a really good opportunity to come in and out of proximity with other cars. I feel great today. Very nice weather. It's warm, but it's not as hot as yesterday or the day before. I'm so ready for this competition. Kick that guy's ass. was pretty interesting simply because of the weather. It was almost like last year where we had these monsoons. So yeah, we we're lining up and we could see the clouds start rolling in and I'm just sitting there going, you're kidding me. And it's kind of typical of how my season has been up to this point. Just nothing has rolled my way and the luck hasn't been on my side. So for the first run out, as I was waiting in line, I noticed that the clouds were getting heavier and heavier. And as soon as I stepped into the start line, uh, the rain started to fall. The first FRS at Formula Jump competition, the Goosh, Ken Gushi, the Gretty Scion Racing FRS. Oh! Clipping the wall! So we probably had the worst of the rain session here in uh, New Jersey. I mean, I tried my best to keep it off the wall, but we, we had a little incident with the wall towards the exit of the bank. Uh, tapped the wall a little bit, but uh, thankfully uh, we avoided you know complete collision with it. Uh, I was able to save the car, so we scored a 60.5. 60.5 for Ken the Goosh Gooshy. You saw the lightning, hopefully he brought the thunder here as Tyler McCory on the line, the Mobile One Chevrolet Camaro. So I go out there on a wet track, which it hasn't rained at all this whole time we've been here for practice or anything. Tyler the Rock McCory transitioning through the latter part of the figure eight. Here we go with Tyler McCory scores at 65.5. 65.5 for Tyler the Rock McCory. Currently leading the X-Mini Rookie Challenge Daigo Saito. If you followed Formula Drift this season, you've seen uh, some different initiations and uh, basically a very controversial battle between Justin Pollock and Daigo Saito, a different form of initiation or pouring out more angle. That came into play. So uh, the judge is making sure that everybody is consistent and no foul play on initiation. <laughs> So a 66 for Daigo Saito and the Achilles Radial Lexus SC. Here we go, Daijiro Yoshihara discount tire, Falcon tire S13. Your 2011 Formula Drift champion. Let's see how he can hang. Blipping the throttle, running the red number on the side because he is your current champion, Daijiro Yoshihara. Make some noise for Dai Yoshihara. There's Dai Yoshihara score a 73. Again, unofficially a 73. As it started to cycle back through the second run, it stopped raining and it just started to dry. Out of the Rock McCoy, here we go. 65.5 was his first run. Let's see if he can better here. The flick initiation from Tyler McCoy launching it into the bank. This Tyler the Rock McCoy. Good transition. Oh, buddy. Nice job placing that left rear, right where the judges wanted between that white and yellow line. It was still wet, but it wasn't raining anymore, so the speeds really weren't there. From that point on, a couple cars after me, the track was totally dry. So the judges started throwing out 90s for us, so we, we dropped like a rock there at the very end and ended up 12. So he does better at 73.5 for Tyler McCory on his second run. But again, all things considered, not too bad, but still would have liked to have had a chance to go out on dry track when we practice on and had our setup and our but we were in. So for the second run, I knew I had to clean up those errors, uh, go in harder, and uh, we actually took off the front and rear sway bars to set up for the rain, dropped the tire pressure a little bit, and uh, for the second session, as we were waiting in line again, it dried up completely. So now I'm waiting in line at the start, start line, and I'm like, oh my god, it's dry. And I'm sitting in the car with the rain set up. You know, what's going to happen? I'm Here we go in the Gretti Scion FRS. This is the Goosh, Ken Gooshy on hand-cooked tires. Nice job, looking a lot 
smoother and faster, obviously. I went in pretty much blind and just gave it my all. I mean, I had nothing to lose at this point, so I threw it in there, and surprisingly, it held up pretty good. So as soon as I, I knew that it was going to make it, I just got on the gas right away and just tried to floor it through the bank. Came out really hot and uh, finished the course. With All right, Ken Gushis, he had a 76 on his second run. We're extremely happy with the results right now, considering that we went in with the wrong setup, but uh, the team did good making that call, and uh, we'll try to figure things out for the next practice session. Dajiro Yoshihara with his second run. Nice job on the bank is Dai Yoshihara. 47 miles an hour, just barely hitting the minimum speed. Good transition, scrubbing that speed. Good consistent angle and smoke coming off of Dai's car. I qualified both race last night. My discount tire is 13. Really, really good right now. 92 for Daichiro Yoshihara. So, boom, jumps it up there. As we continue on with the action, currently second in points, Daigo Saito, current leader in the X Mini Rookie Challenge. Well, ranking is not really thinking about it, so, at least, the bank will be able to do it. The bank will be able to do it. 80.5, 80.5 for Daigo Saito, Achilles Radial, Lexus SC. They, they wanted me to be less aggressive with my feint, so I was trying to be less aggressive, but the car straightened up and just went into the wall. For And it was I was the last run in practice before we were going into our top 32 battles. And I hit hard. And the back went in, and then it sucked the front in and ripped the whole left front off the car. And I got out and looked at it, and I pretty much saw my day was done. And it just wasn't good. I was, I was pretty pissed off, to be honest. We bring the car back to the pits and these guys start thrashing on it and we're on the bottom of the left side of the ladder which means there's about 14, 15 pairs to go before we have to be up there. They replace the We got the gear back together. By then it was our turn to go up. We called five minutes, Formula D's over here. I'm in the car, they drop the car down. I roll over there. I was matched up with Dennis Bertanis for top 32 and he was waiting over there. It was, it was kind of eerie because last year I called five minutes right before top 32 with Dennis. So he was probably getting a little deja vu there. But I went out there and I'm sitting there going, man, I got to do this for these guys. They just busted their butts and, and fixed the car faster than I ever could imagine. Great to see that Gardella racing built. Mobile One Camaro up on the line after that crash in practice. Tyler McCurry is going to be leading Mobile One Camaro. Yo common tires, followed by Dennis Berzanis with the Kenta tire, S13. Went out there and I just drove angry, just pissed off, and it worked. Dennis Berzanis is going to be leading, Tyler McCurry is going to give chase. I had a good lead run, my follow run, I was all over him. Dennis Berzanis initiating into that first corner, high on the bank, that's a good line from Dennis. Oh, tags the wall, loses a bumper, not able to make that transition to the bank. Looks like Tyler McQuarrie is going to have a, a pretty easy run. So we're moving on. It's awesome. I'm feeling really good in this car and I can't wait to do battle. So for the top 32 rounds here at Wall Speedway, we were matched up against uh, Patrick Mordaunt from the Apex Racing Team. Here we go with Gucci and Mordaunt. Gucci is going to be leading as the higher qualifier, initiating with the hand cooked tires. For the lead run, I just put on a, you know, a qualifying style run, didn't even look behind me. Coming down across the bank, both drivers hitting that clip pretty smoothly. My spotter was telling me that I, I could have possibly had an advantage, so in the, the follow run I knew I just had to, you know, do my thing, stick it right there and I see if I can pull out the win. Pat Mordaunt leading, Ken Gushi going to give chase. So for my follow run against Pat, uh, coming off the bank, he transitioned and clipped the clipping point zone cone, 
and uh, that thing flew towards my car and knocked my bumper off. So at that point, I was like, oh my god, you know, this might lose my rhythm. But uh, coming into the first inside uh, bank, I shallowed up a little bit, but it wasn't too much to the point where it was a complete mistake. So the judges gave me the win. Ken's mom just texted me, this might be rough, but I think that was one more time. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll take the win. Now this is going to be a very interesting battle. Luke Blomberger will be leading this first run on the right. Zygo Saito, a turbo by Garrett driver, so he's looking to hunt another V8. He's got the most kills of anybody. Blomberger initiating, Zygo right behind him. High on the bank, good run from both drivers. A lot of smoke coming off those hand cooked tires. Zygo kind of giving some room and you'll see him suck in right here on that inner bank. Zygo kind of conservative on this run. This is kind of surprising for me. He's got good proximity, but he we don't see him quite on the door of Luke Lomberger like we've seen him in practice. So this will be interesting. Lomberger has said on Facebook he won't stand for any brake checking, and he's willing to uh, apply throttle as needed. Got a good initiation, tons of smoke from Daigo. Looks like Lomberger's gonna need to catch him up. Oh, and Lomberger's spinning as he crosses the infield pretty much official that uh, Daigo is going to be moving on. He'll be facing Odie Bakshis in the, the next round. In top 32, I ran up against Taka Aono. Here we go, coming off the line. Daigo Chara is going to lead. Takayono giving chase. Got that flick entry from Daigo Chara. Takayono right behind him. He, I think he did really good on the bank. He was really close. But towards the end, I think I made quite a big gap between me and him. Looks like Taka's taking that wider line. Not as much smoke, but again, not making any major mistakes. Dai's just running that qualifying line as prescribed by the judges in the driver's meeting. Good smoke from Dai Yoshihara off those Falcon tires. And then when I followed him... So these guys will switch. Taka a little bit slower than Dai. It'll be interesting to see how this follow run goes. Taka's going to be initiating. Good run on the bank. Next to tires under the, the wheels. Dai Yoshihara not behind him again. Not as much smoke from Taka, but... Still plenty of speed. He, I think he missed ship in the third corner and actually he kind of gave up at the point and I, I have to pass him and I finish the trap. So that, that was a major mistake by Taka and that made me move on to top 16. Looking ahead a little bit, we got some great matchups coming up in the top 16. Underway, Odie Bakshi's number one qualifier is going to lead. Daigo Saito is going to give chase, initiating into the first corner. Odie initiated a little bit later than I would expect. And Daigo hard on his door. Daigo really showing that he's a, a great chase driver. Coming across the infield as Daigo's tucking inside. I don't think that's quite the line that they're looking for, but he's got that proximity for sure. Daigo hard on the chase of Odie Bakshi. Odie driving a good, consistent, stable line. Really, no major bobbles. The judges are asking for another replay. Yeah. They want to see yep. exactly what happened here. It looked like Odie tagged, kind of nicked the clipping point coming off the bank on that switchback. Yeah, yeah. I know. Odie barely touches it. Daigo, Daigo destroys explodes it. it. He's going to kind of ingest it all, see what happens with this monster. Daigo Saito initiating. Odie initiated extremely late. He's much shallower on the bank, and Daigo's just running away from it. Now, Odie just needs to stay focused and, and keep driving his line. There's, can't be focused on uh, trying to cut any corners or anything. He needs to stay in drift the entirety of the course. Oh, that looked like Daigo straightened out there right after that transition. What a great top 16. Odie's pumped, giving that fist pump to Jersey outside his window. Daigo Saito gets the win. It was a unanimous decision. His fourth consecutive great eight and four one of the appearances. We've got Conrad Grunwald versus Ken Gucci coming up. I had a really good uh, following lap going against them in the first run. Conrad Grunwald, the defending champion in New Jersey. Hancock Tire Headquarters just down the street. Conrad initiating high on the bank. Gucci just as high on the bank. Great tire smoke from both drivers coming across the infield. Almost equal angle from both. Looks like Conrad is really slowing up a little bit on the infield. 
Gucci's able to close in the gap, stay tight to Conrad. Give enough room for that transition. I expect Gucci to suck into him again on this inner transition. Not quite the proximity I think the judge is looking for. I don't think either driver necessarily earned an advantage, but neither driver had lost an advantage. Absolutely. Either. Coming into the first turn, Conrad is getting a little bit lower on the bank. Gucci seems to have more angle. Conrad taking the shallower line. There you see the head kick tire smoke. Gucci punts that clipping point out of the way, but oh, Gucci spinning on the infield. I don't, I don't know what happened in the second run. I just totally you know, lost my rhythm. Coming off the bank on my lead run, I don't know what I was thinking, but I wasn't looking at the right clipping point. And I totally transitioned way too early and dove right straight into the, the clip, the point, you know, the, the stick thing. So at that point, I was like, uh, this is done. I transitioned again and I had way too much angle going into the first uh, inside bank. So I spun around and I lost. And it's just unfortunate because my team did a great job putting the car together. I mean, we came here, you know, we swapped out the suspension and uh, it was feeling really good and we qualified really good too. So it's just unfortunate what happened, but I guess we just have to make changes and uh, make sure I'm looking at the right direction for the next round at Seattle. So this next battle coming up, Tyler McQuarrie. Chelsea Denofa, both these cars have been putting off great smoke all weekend long, so here we go, coming into the first quarter. Oh, Chelsea looks like he had a problem, had to reinitiate. I knew it was going to be a battle. He went really slow into the into the bank. I barely got up into fourth gear, so I knew our entry speed was way down, so it really bogged me down into the bank. I kept good proximity, probably like a car length. It wasn't the best, just because I got so bogged down in the bank. Uh, but the judges definitely saw that and made note of it, and they told us not to do that in the driver's meeting. On my lead run, I knew I just had to go all out. I knew he was going to be all over me. Tyler McQuarrie is going to be initiating. Chelsea's going to be following. Tyler initiating very slow on the bank. Oh, Tyler, back into the wall. Oh, wow. Big collision. I just got into the bank and just got into the wall a little bit with the rear, and, and he came in, in behind me and, and hit me from behind. And it actually uh, put me up on the wall. We actually did, I think, the first 50 50 grind in Formula D. Again, I thought we were done. One thing that the judges have talked about was how to judge that second run. Overall, the decision was made that both drivers crashed, and it was unclear whether either driver would have been able to continue the run. So the judges decided that that run would be considered a wash. The first run would then be the only run that was judged. And therefore, Tyler McQuarrie will be getting the win on this run. Tyler McQuarrie will be moving on to the top eight. In the top 16 round, I ran up against Nish, and the battle was really tight. These guys are very familiar with each other, good friends, but enemies on the line. Yeah, Dayo Shahar, the V8 power of the Falcon Tire S13, Reese Mellon in the V6 of the Hyundai, Genesis Scoot, Dayo Shahar, High on the bank, Reese closing up that gap, staying close to, to Dyer's car. Good proximity, this is what you guys want to see. Transitioning back. When he was following me, he hit me a couple times. That means he was that close. Damn, dude, he hit me a few times. Yeah, Roger's that, Roger's that. Wow, Dai Yoshihara and Reese Mellon, this is a great round. This is only the top 16. See, Reese Mellon is going to be leading this run. Dai Yoshihara will be giving chase. Good initiation from Reese. High on the bank. Good smoke from both these cars coming across the middle. Reese hits that same clipping point that Dai hit. Dai is on pretty close to his door. Looks like Reese is pulling away a little bit. Transition across the middle. Guy is able to maintain good proximity as well. Wow. Oh man. I see a lot of people holding number one in the air. Dai Yoshihara gets the win. Dai Yoshihara gets the win. I think the punishment for Reese Millen for the contact was the deciding factor. He's aggressive. It was really tough, but it was it was really fun. Because I can trust this guy. Thanks, man. I know it was really tight. Okay. Next battle, I think I got tighter. Another good friend of mine. Jersey is kind of crazy. What the hell, man? He is smoking me right now. Is that his strategy or what? Dayo Shahara, Tyler McQuarrie. 
next up on track. This Camaro is repaired from the prior run-in with Chelsea Dinopa on the main track. Dyer Sharp's going to lead the first. Great entry from both drivers there. Dyer Shahara and Tyler McQuarrie both utilizing that flick entry. Coming across the start finish line. Both drivers are able to stay clear of that clipping point. When I was leading, I was able to make pretty good gap. Ty pulled away a little bit. Back to the transition. It's a great angle for Tyler McQuarrie. But when he was leading, I would stay pretty close. Here we go. Yokohama tires on Tyler McQuarrie's car. Fox tires on Dyer Char's car. Great smoke from Tyler McQuarrie. So I went up against Dai Yoshihara in the grade eight and had a great battle with him. Unanimous decision, Dai Yoshihara gets the win. Dai is the first person into the top four. It was so damn close and I really thought we would either get the win or get it one more time. Dai got the win and we got knocked out again. So pretty disappointed with that result, you know, especially for these guys. They just busted their butt all day long and it's a true testament to this team. The whole Mobile One Chevrolet Camaro team just killed it today. I was just blown away how hard they worked and I owe these guys a win and it's coming soon. We've got starter line activated and Daigo Saito is going to be following that turbo by Garrett. Conrad Grunwald with the lead, making that initiation on the bank. A little shallower angle from Daigo initially. A lot of smoke coming off Conrad's car. Daigo takes out that clipping point. Tons of angle from Daigo. I thought he was going to lose it. Wow. Look at him. Daigo jumped that angle. Take out another clipping point. Very shallow on drift through the whoops. Great proximity from Daigo, but I think some of those mistakes online might affect him. Absolutely, that was certainly not the run Daigo wanted. Conrad, awesome run, nice and high qualifying line, but you know, he hasn't been the fast car here this weekend. That Lexus certainly is. Here we go with Daigo Saito initiating drift. Conrad taking the lower line on the bank. Tons of smoke, can't even see Conrad's car. Conrad's able to avoid that clipping point and not take it out like Daigo did. Little shallow line from Conrad. Of course, Daigo's gonna walk away from this with all the power. More than 1,200 horsepower under the hood of that card. I see the judges writing down some decisions. I see some scribbles. So let's see what happens. Andy Yen says Daigo Saito. Ryan Latane said Conrad Grunlow. So that means we're going one more time. Here we go, Daigo Saito is going to lead. Conrad Grimwald giving chase. High on the bank, great smoke from Con from uh, Daigo. Conrad getting lost in that smoke. Coming through the, the transition cleanly. Back on the inner bank. Again, Daigo Saito just walks away from Conrad. Unanimous decision. Daigo Saito gets the win. Daigo Saito will be moving on to the final four for his fourth consecutive Formula D event. And now I, I'm getting a Daigo, I think. I was just talking to Daigo and he says he's scared of me. That was my second time to have a battle with him and I knew it was going to be a really tough one. How's Daigo's initiation, by the way? Uh, he but sometimes he does a very, very small thing, but mostly just e brake. I, I, I still have a good feeling about the. Good to know, Mike. I like your good feeling. Dio Sahara is sitting in third in points. Daigo Saito sitting in second in points. And the leader, Justin Pollock, is knocked out already. So this could be a potentially yeah, pretty yeah. big shakeup in the points. Dio Sahara is going to lead. Daigo Saito is going to give chase. Dio Sahara high on the bank. Daigo Saito tries to follow him up there on the switchback. Again, Daigo Saito has almost no angle coming through that transition. Wow, look at Saito. Looked like he was going to wash out and lose drift. He's able to save it. Transition much earlier than Daigo. Very shaky run from Saito in the follow. Daigo was driving really hard and he was really close to me when he was falling. Perfectly run. Uh, Daigo made a mistake right at the end. A uh, minor mistake, but your lead run was perfect. Daigo Saito's front brake light did go on. That uh, left to right transition has been kind of tricky for Daigo. I think it's great to see Daigo learning from his last runs. He's had issues with transition off the bank, clip and cones, but right there he transitioned very, very early. Uh, kind of 
I'm not going to say straighten, but an early transition made it look like he straightened into the turn, and then there was definitely contact there. But whether it, you know, it didn't seem to upset Dai's line as such. So. So again, Saito initiating on his lead run had some left foot breaky going into that first turn. Here's the transition. Looked like a smooth transition there from Saito. Dai Yoshihara is able to close in that that gap get a lot closer to Saito and Saito pulls away coming around that horseshoe back through the transition a little bit of left foot break again through that transition Dai Yoshihara is closing up that gap See, that wasn't perfect on your part but he wasn't perfect either uh, give me one more time give us a pick I'm saying one more time well I like Dai the judges wanted one more time that's what matters <laughs> So we're going one more I'm happy. Time. I called it. I got a right call for once. What do you know? Daigo Saito will be leading. Daigo Shahar will be chasing. Here we go into the bank. Again, some left foot breaking on initiation. Daigo Saito saw what JR did on initiation and wants to emulate him. Very high on the bank. Taking out that clipping point on the switchback. That will likely be a deduction. Daigo Shahar with some great proximity. We haven't seen anybody keep up with Dai Daigo through this part of the course as well as Dai did. Back through the whoop. Coming around, a little left foot breaking action. Dio Shahar running a little bit shallower, which the judges have permitted for following purposes to keep that proximity. A great run from Dio Shahar. I have to say that's probably one of the best chase runs we've seen all weekend from any of the drivers. Damn, man, it's a tight puddle. Take a slight advantage, you. Andy Yen and Brian Eggert both chose Dio Shahar, so Dio Shahar will be moving on. Back in the pits. So Dio Shahar will be moving on. Dai is 2 and 0 oh against Daigo Saito. He's the only driver who's been able to defeat Daigo Saito twice this season. It was a close one, but Daigo definitely has a style that I don't think's really been seen in the States. And, you know, being a Japanese driver, maybe Dai is just adapting to do it better. He probably knows his moves a little bit better. And I guess that's what I want to for. This is fucking ridiculous. That's all I have to say. or when Daigo did his cheating in this Dude, it's not, dude, he's not. Everybody's against him and this house is gonna be successful. Yeah, yeah. For you. We're going to go to the Constellation round first between Daigo and Forsberg for that third place position. Daigo Saito on the left, Chris Forsberg on the right. We are ready to go for the, the Constellation round. This is the last rung on the podium. Chris Forsberg is going to lead as the higher qualified driver. Daigo Saito is going to give chase. Great proximity there on the big bank from Saito. Here comes that transition that Saito has just continued to struggle with all weekend long. Oh, is there a collision there? Looks like Carter Car contact. Chris Forsberg continues his run. Daigo Saito straightened out. Back through the loop section. Let's take a look at the replay. Yeah, good height on the bank by both drivers. Good proximity, but Daigo is struggling with this transition. And this is what affects him in the bottom corner. He transitions early, not much angle. Therefore, he's coming in here with more speed than maybe he intended to. Has trouble slowing it down and makes contact, but Chris isn't even phased, stays on it. Here's the rest of the course. So Stago Saito will switch, he will be on the right side again in a turbo by Garrett. Chris Forsberg on the left. Here we go, down the back straight, Stago Saito initiating, high on the bank. Staying high through the majority of the bank, Chris Forsberg not far behind him. 
back on that transition, takes out that same clipping point over and over. Chris Forsberg closing up that gap. See Daigo Saito get back on the power, pull a little bit of a gap, expand that proximity. Forsberg, status quo for him, time and time again. You can see the great views from the GoPro cameras mounted on both cards. Oh! Forsberg may have made contact with Saito, but he spun out. Woo! So, unanimous decision. Chris Forsberg given the win. This will be his first ever podium in New Jersey. These guys giving props to each other. A yeah. good run for both drivers. I think you have time to catch a couple waves, buddy. Sounds good, buddy. So this is for everything. This is for the win. Bonnie Jr. on the right, Dio Char on the left. Both these drivers have done well in the past. Bonnie Jr. initiating first, leading as the second ranked qualifier high on the bank. Interesting, keeping his bumper intact for his first lead run in the several matchups. Continuing around the inside, Dai, decent proximity, but not as close to some of the previous runs. Dai is having a conservative run. There goes that bumper. JR took out. Wow. Vonnegut Jr. took out the clipping point on the inner clip. I'm not supposed to give it to him, dude. Uh, he made some big mistakes in there. He is a lot better than the rest of them. That's okay, dude. He's going to take care of himself. You're leading now, so you're controlling this. For all the ponies. Here we go. Dyer Char initiating. Vonnegut Jr. behind him. Vaughn a little bit higher at the start of the bank. Both drivers high on the bank through the end. Back to the transition. Both drivers leave the clipping point. Dai, Dai has a good run. JR almost spins out, but is able to maintain grip through that entirety of that corner. That is very impressive from Vaughn Jr. Dai with substantially more angle. Wow, good proximity from JR as they cross through the start finish line. Ty, he did a half spin following you right here in front of us, dude. I think you got him. He's on top of the tires. He's got a be in the hood. And he's from Maryland. He's 4 2 the most dangerous the He's been Second place. It's not on. Thank you. Yes, you have a fish out there. I'm ready to go. Stop it, sir. That's 13. There you have it. One, two, and three. Um, I thought I could get it, you know. Feels like. I, I, you know, I was, I feel really, I felt really good, but I think I, I used all my energy towards Daigo, just, just like uh, Long Beach. Here we go, second place here in round four of the Formula Pro Championship. In the Nets Cup Tire, Falcon Tire, S13, the 2011 Formula Jump Champion, Daichiro Yoshihara! Congratulations, buddy.